What are some red flags for teachers that scream drop this class immediately? These books are required for the class. I wasn't able to get the revision into the bookstore in time. So the only place you can get them is from me directly or from my website. I will warn you. If you don't buy the books you won't get the login information to be able to take the final. Which is 90% of your grade. Oh. And no. I can't accept financial aid for them. But it's only $250 so it's not a big deal. Never seen an entire class get up 5 minutes and then leave before. I had a teacher that I loved but everyone hated. My economics teacher was an absolute madman. First day of econ. Madman first rule. Any and all cell phones are to remain off. If I see you using them, I will throw them out the door. Cell phone rings. It's his. Madman looks at class. Grabs cell phone and throws it out the door. Madman didn't need to talk to my wife anyway. Double quote. Reddit. My top comment is one of my favorite memories. Thanks Reddit. You guys are awesome. Had a drawing professor that put a stack of pre-signed withdrawal forms on his desk. Told us to grab one when we were ready. Too many people got A's last semester. So I'm changing my syllabus for you all. You should drop all of your other classes because this course will require a lot of time and effort. Tenured organic chem prof. Any questions? 50 hands go up. Prof. It's a fairly simple concept. So you also get there. Let's move on. No one will get an A in this course because, insert some philosophical highbrow bullet answer. Back when I started college, I got straight A plus S in a class. But when I went to check on my overall grade, I had a B plus. Found it odd and went to question my teacher about it. He said that he dropped down my grade because the class was a bit of a pain in the ass. He didn't use those exact words. But that's what he meant. Then I questioned him again about my posture, asking if I did anything wrong, or disturbed class or whatever. He promptly said I didn't and that I was a great student, which made me ask again why is grade lower then. He told the same excuse from above. Then I asked if he was planning on changing my grade at all, since I had only as, and he promptly said he wasn't going to change. Fast forward a few days, I ended up filing a complaint about him and his method of grading students. And the college made him change my grade. After that he approached me and said something like hey you forces you didn't have to file a complaint about me. I was gonna fix you grade yada yada. When they really put down good students for small mistakes. This is my first time teaching. So you'll be my guinea pigs her test averages were low 50s with no scaling. It was great. Think that their students should only focus on this particular class for the upcoming semester as if they should spend all their time on it. My name is Konstantin Makarov. I was nuclear physicist in Russia. This course will not be easy. Not all will survive. But we can get through it together. First words uttered by my differential equations professor. The required textbook is a saran wrapped package of loose leaf papers that cost $100. Authored by the professor. When they read the powerpoints word for word, I can do that at home. Teach PLS. I took an economics course and bombed the first test. I went to the professor and told her I really want to do well in your class. What are some suggestions you might have on how I can be successful? She looked at the grade on the test and said you should drop the class and change your major. I may be it at economics but I can follow instructions. Saw a course at my college called Digital Media and American Culture. Sounds neat. I thought, I'll go to a lecture during the shopping period. The professor is 10 minutes late. An 80 year old man. Who gets up and literally asks a student in the front to tell him how many Facebook friends she has and then how many real friends do you have. Was flabbergasted when he asked if anyone in the classroom had read 1984 and most of the class raised their hands. He was 100% convinced that millennials never pick up books anymore. Yeah. No. I had a professor that in hindsight I really should have dropped. It was a western civilization history class. And the first day the entirety of the class he spent talking about how he missed his old job teaching in Europe because American students are more lazy and incapable of getting as high of grades. 
Then he showed intro YouTube videos from his personal laptop hooked to a projector and all of the recommend videos all had titles like grinding with thong, sexy college babe grinding, etc. I thought he was just eccentric. But the guy was easily the worst teacher I ever had. He would expect you to totally memorize all the chapter. He would quiz on material that didn't matter for concepts, i.e. what was the name of Caesar's second cousin, when the information would be found in a huge family tree. The only students in the class with A's were women, and he would grade their quizzes differently and be much more lenient. The students compared quiz results. Someone in class called him out and he said that he was tired of teaching Americans and doesn't get paid enough. Literally. I've had teachers that I just simply couldn't understand due to a language barrier and in hindsight I should have dropped immediately. I learned that basically if you can't understand what the teacher is saying, be prepared to teach yourself a lot of the class. I had an accounting teacher one time who was Chinese and I remember sitting in that class on the first day scratching my head because I had no idea what she was saying. I looked around and a lot of the other people had the same look on their faces. The next week I showed up to class and what was once a classroom of about 40 people was now about 12. I should have known right there to drop, but I didn't. I stuck it out and a few weeks go by and it didn't get any better. I got my first test back and completely bombed it. I told myself right then that I was going to have to teach myself the material and that coming to class was pointless. So I taught myself accounting by using the textbook. Since I didn't go to class I missed all of her pop quizzes but just told myself I'll make it up on the tests. I only showed up for tests in the final and lo and behold, I passed the class. Get out the science textbooks and work on chapter 5. Activity 1 inches. Proceeds to sit down at their desk to do random it on their computer. Pride in the difficulty of their course. If everyone fails, it's not for an inability to learn, but for an inability to teach. Gives a test on the first day that will be counted against you. Had one of my mathematics teachers do this. Day 1 of grad school for electrical engineering, multivariable Laplace transforms, everyone takes their seats and professor smiles and says in a thick Russian accent. Disforced Klesitich, okay? I had a sociology class where during the introductory lecture the professor went on a tangent about how since she has a doctorate if she was ever on a plane and someone asked is there a doctor on board she would say she was a doctor. If you didn't call her DR, she would ignore you. She stated that holding a doctorate in sociology should carry the same clout as being an MD. No disrespect to sociologists or anyone with a PhD but those are not the same things. She went on other rants about how nobody has ever gotten a 4.0 in her class and she was proud of it. It was the worst class I've ever taken. She was just an insecure nutcase with a PhD on a power trip. I barely passed. Oh and the course text was of course her own book. I've never taught this before so I'll be learning along with you. Edit. She ended up getting double teamed by two seniors and let go. The use of McGraw-Hill Connect if the class isn't absolutely necessary. Personal experience. I literally dropped four classes my sophomore year. Prior to starting the classes the disability department contacted all of my teachers to tell them that I am deaf and that I would need some form of written typed paper to follow along with lectures. I'm completely deaf. Sit closer. I can't give you special treatment. This class will be using a textbook that I am writing and editing during the semester. Translation. It's going to be amateur hour. In addition to trying to learn new stuff, you are paying the school for the privilege of proofreading your professor's book. I'll make the class too hard and curve the class average to a C. Because C is average. No laptops. All code will be handwritten. Yes that really happened. Reviews on rate my professor. There are a few times that the student was just mad that they got a low grade, but more often than not, they are spot on. When the teacher doesn't even explain anything, he just goes on YouTube and shows the class a video and everyone is left without a clue of what is going on. I dropped computer science because of this, and I'm glad that I did. Also, when the teacher hardly ever explains anything and insists in independent research. More like I can't be asked preparing lessons so just go ahead and do it yourself. 
I haven't quite finalized the coursework and grading so I'll be adjusting them as we go along. Surprise assignments. Surprise tests. Way too many group projects. I should have known. If all your professor does is read from the textbook, then drop that class, if you can. Sometimes you need it for your major, or a time conflict, but if you can, drop it, you know how to read. You have to buy this online book to have access to the online homework, when I can get a PDF of the book by various means. Who the hell want to pay to do homework twice? Edit, see I was going to reply to everyone, but then there are a buttload of comments. Pearson, Sapling, Hooks, Wiley, all of them are crooks in book. I've been fortunate to not have any of those classes since sophomore year but did I hate it when did. Edit JR. Obligatory my highest updated post comment is to me fussing about how something costs too much. I approve. It's a real shame college administrations by and large promote this tomfoolery for a bird dog fee. I don't see it ending soon. Not without some sort of textbook industry collapse and rebirth. For the short term. If you can galvanize your classmates to discuss better and affordable options, there could be success there. It sounds idealistic, but sometimes just asking makes a big difference. Or maybe just a free cookie. 2 hour. In class. Pre-recorded PowerPoint lectures from 2008. Because it saves time for me. And please don't ask questions until after the end of my PowerPoint. This was in 2017. When the first thing they say before reading the two page 1.0 spaced syllabus is, I've been teaching for x years so I deserve your respect or something like that. That's basically a 100% accurate indicator that this person cannot be wrong and they will talk to you like you're a piece of it. They can't earn anybody's respect so they have to ransom it. If they do icebreakers not just on the first day, but the second day as well, it means they have no idea what they're doing. I took a physics class when I was in college. Day 1, I am paging through the syllabus, which was like 5 pages long by the way, and I see that there's a 5 page paper due later that week. I asked the professor if that was a mistake. He said it was not. I dropped the class that afternoon. Edit. This post is getting a lot of attention so I will address what seems to be a common theme in replies I am getting. I agree that a 5 page paper is not a large amount of work. The red flag was more about the fact that there was a term paper assigned for a hard science like physics. I did not need the class to graduate. I only took it because I was interested in it. So I decided it was probably not the right fit for me. Definitely one of the biggest things you need to consider is that even if there is a large workload, depending on the subject it may help, you have to remember that the professor has to also grade this stuff so assuming there's no TA doing all of the grading. It is extra work for him. It's not what you want to hear. But take for example my physical chemistry professor. He assigned 1-2 homework assignments per week. And they took anywhere from 3-6 hours on average to finish. It sucked ass. But instead of guessing on exams. I fully understood the material. This professor was always answering emails as well. Within an hour at almost any time of the day. If they have it he responds times. They probably won't be that helpful and I'd recommend dropping. The most helpful professors I've had were the ones that answered emails as app. The opposite, purchasing the book for this class will not be necessary. Save your money. I have a PDF copy if anyone needs it. But we will follow along together. And I have printouts of all the questions. When a teacher does that I'm like okay. They obviously care about making this a good experience and not wasting my time or money. I once had a professor say you get two absences this semester, more than two and you fail. It doesn't matter what the excuse is, sorry, with older relatives who were sick and dying, and not being a psychic myself to know whether or not I'd get sick or if I'd forget to set an alarm, or any number of unforceable things. That level of rigidity and unwillingness to compromise isn't worth it. Class of 80 averages a 40% on a test. Prof. That's what they get for not learning the material. We'll be doing three group projects this semester. I will assign the group and it will be the same group for all three projects. Nope. I have gotten my entire degree taking online classes from the University of Houston and there are two things that scream drop this class. 
1. You are required to log on to Blackboard at least 3 days a week. Oh so I didn't register for an online class because I've got ample hours in my day to log on and do schoolwork I take online classes because I have the ability to successfully compete weeks worth of work in one day. 2. You are required to use lockdown browser for exams and have your webcam on and you must give me a tour of the entire room with the camera and the volume must be on and it must be during normal working hours. Oh so nano 1 invades my privacy and my normal working hours are 11am to 9pm not much I can do about taking an exam before 5pm. If they treat the class like a high school class. Had a professor proclaim no cell phones or she would take them away. Attendance was mandatory and if you are not going to be in class without telling her she will assume you're lazy and fail you. For some reason she hated me on day one which was weird. I was motivated to get a good grade to bump my overall GPA up. I just needed a D4 degree requirement. Sat up front. Took detailed notes. Left cell phone face down like the prof requested. However no matter what I could never get above 70% on anything. About one stroke two way through the class I noticed the bias BC my friend just copied all my it and always got 15% higher. I went to her office hours and pointed this out. She flat out looked at me and said you're a lazy pose I can see it. I don't want to see you pass. You have an attitude in my class. However, you showed up here so I'll keep a better eye on you and see if I'm wrong. My grades slowly started going up after that. Still never reaching my friends. Then I made the biggest mistake. I decided to tell her I would miss the next class to pick up my bro from the airport who I haven't seen in 7 years. She threw a fit, yelling at me in front of the class on how I was a nobody and wouldn't amount to it and no matter what I would never get a good grade with my attitude. I later learned she always picked someone at random in every one of her classes and makes their it miserable only to give them C so they would need to retake the class if it was required to get better than a C. TLDR. If a professor treats the class like high school they are on a power trip and there's no telling what they will ducking do. When I was 18 I took a beauty therapy and science class. One of the units we had was business studies. I had previously sat in a level in business so I still had notes and books left over. We didn't have the usual business teacher because she was signed off sick. Cancer I believe. So instead of getting a qualified teacher in. The department bought in a beauty salon manager who was a rich. Knew nothing about teaching but thought she knew everything about business. First class we have. She's doing the introduce yourself thing. Then she asks who in this class is a Leo? I raise my hand and it's only me. Oh because in my star signs I always clash with Leos. Sorry. Okay so we have a crazy itch. The class is sat in a stunned silence as I simply say okay cool. The time comes to write the assignment for the class and me being savvy I used my old business class notes and books and hand it in with the biggest smile on my face. Results day. Everyone passes with high marks all except me. She has me up in front of my head tutor for plagiarism and she's clearly copied and pasted all of this from the internet. My head tutor explained that Shack and Shake has sat at a level in business so she should know what she's talking about. My head tutor Ray marked my paper and passed it with a high merit. I later told her about what was said regarding the star signs and how I felt attacked due to some insignificant fact about my birth sign. Next lesson she announces she's leaving due to my teaching methods being questioned and having a complaint whilst glaring at me. The rest of the class was relieved. Professor claimed she didn't allow people to step out of class to use the bathroom. You're all adults. Not children. You can hold it. Exactly lady. We're adults. We paid to be here. And adults have to use the bathroom. The professor can't stop making political comments. Especially if it's a class like Spanish or Calculus. The instructor either seems to have trouble speaking in the language in which the class is being taught or their accent is so thick that it's difficult to understand them. While plenty of people are incredibly knowledgeable about their topic of interest without being great at multiple languages. The fact of the matter is that you're not going to learn much if you're going to have to devote so much of your attention into just figuring out what the instructor is saying. Over the winter break of my freshman year I was diagnosed with a degenerative bone disease in my knees which meant I had to use crutches for a while, then eventually a wheelchair for a time. I was late to my philosophy 101 class, due to adjusting to my newfound limitations. I apologized for my tardiness and tried to find my seat without making a fuss. 
As I was making my way across the classroom my philosophy teacher remarked everyone. Let's just patiently wait for the cripple here to get to his seat. It's possible she had believed I was one of several skiing injuries that the student body had incurred over winter break. But either way after that first day I never came back to that class. In an English class for the 12th grade, I was handed back an essay and with it a mark of 64%. Hard teacher but I'm not the best at English. With this mark was a comment that read excellent work. That's when I knew. This itch was Lucifer. I had some issues with my schedule and wasn't registered for a particular course on the first day of class. So I registered and attended on the second day. He had already paired up the class into groups of 3-4 on day 1 for a project that would span the entire course and count for a large part of our grade. When I asked if I could be joined into a smaller group he told me no. That I could do the work solo for the semester. I was peeved but needed that course as a prerequisite for something I needed next semester so I silently fumed. After week 2 I had failed two reports because he just didn't like what I wrote. Not that the reasoning, research, or writing was unsound he just didn't like the subject so he gave me failing grades. I dropped the class, took it with another teacher the next semester, and graduated a semester late because of it. I don't regret it. He was a horrible teacher and I'm sure my mental health would have suffered if I had continued in his class. Was a freshman in college. Needed to get some science credits with a lab. Took geology because I wanted to try something besides bio. That I just took in high school. The teacher gave a speech the first day of class about how it gets under her skin that people take geology because they're required to take a lab and just assume that it'll be an easy A. So... She said this class will not be an easy A, and then proceeded to make it hard as duck. Like make it challenging so people will be engaged, but make it nigh impossible to pass just to prove a point. Doesn't speak clear English and doesn't hold office hours. This is for a university in USA. P.S. Holding office hours but never being there doesn't help anyone. By appointment only. But having zero availability also doesn't help anyone. If you arrive late then you're absent. There's a huge waitlist of students for a different section with a different professor. Oh and she doesn't speak your native language well enough to communicate the class material. Yes you will go to class, study for tests, and do all of the bonus projects. But rest assured you'll get the first C of your college career in a damn general education requirement because of her. A group project worth a substantial amount of your grade. Duck group projects. You'll have to forgive me if I don't understand your American sentiments. As an international, I'm unfamiliar with your culture. Stated by a woman who lived in America till the age of 12. She thought she was the most intelligent person because she'd been able to live abroad. Worst professor I've had. If they segregate students. I had an American history class where on the first day the teacher told everyone that no one was to sit in the furthest left row of seats. Those seats were reserved for the what she called idiots. Idiots were people who arrived late for class. My class before this ended 5 minutes before this class did and was on the other side of campus. I took the safe route and dropped the class. This was before the school made it a rule that you had to have 10 minutes between classes. And the professor was an adjunct professor. On an unrelated note I had an English teacher at this same school that thought when someone had a number on the back window of their car. A number the DMV makes you put there due to some issue with your registration. It meant they were bad drivers and essentially on notice. She thought this because she said she had only ever seen Asian drivers with them. The girl who explained what it actually meant knew because she had had one. And was also Asian. That last teacher I know for a fact no longer works as a teacher. I'm not grading any assignments this term. Your grade rests entirely on the final exam. When the history teacher makes the German exchange student cry for simply being German. A red flag that the teacher has a really bad ego problem is if they require you buy their books. Especially if they only recommend books they've written. Yes. You are the only person who has ever written about James Baldwin. No one else has anything remotely worth adding to the conversation. Also, using your students as a means of increasing your cell numbers making more money is a ritty, egotistical thing to do. I don't believe in curves. 
over half this class is retaking this class more a reflection on the professor than the students. The workload they give you do for next class when it's your first class. 70% of students will fail this class. GTFO. Professor was semi-retired. One of his conditions for coming out of full retirement was all his courses had to be done by 9am so he could still enjoy his day. No one passed his 7am advanced calculus classes. My high school physics teacher's first sentence was if you're just taking this course for the sake of a credit drop this class immediately. 